interesting and the police might not want anyone to stand too close to them, so maybe they could use the APDS9960 sensor with a proximity function that will report increasingly larger values as objects come closer. I'm Prof G, and this is CircuitPython School, and in this lesson, we'll show you how to get this StemAQT device working on most CircuitPython boards. We'll first demonstrate this in an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, but what we learned should work on most other CircuitPython boards. We'll have a challenge and show a solution that'll light up a NeoPixel strip with more LEDs the closer an object comes to the sensor. We'll learn how to improve the code using Python slices. We'll learn a few gotchas and common errors and how to overcome them. And as a bonus, we'll also show how to get this build working on the ultra tiny Adafruit Cutie Pie RP2040. This is a great little board that's just a little bit quirky, but that can do the same things as the big guys with just a bit of code and library tweaking. Big learning is rapidly approaching. Let's geek up! So friends, this board, the APDS9960, is a multi-sensing marvel, and the version that I'm using has STEM AQT ports, so wiring is as simple as plugging in a cable. Now this device can sense proximity, light, color, and can detect simple gestures like up, down, left, and right. And it can do this because the board has an infrared LED light. Now infrared is light beyond the red in the ROYG Biv color spectrum, so it's light that humans can't see, but our sensor can. And in fact, the light is detected by four photo sensors in different locations on the sensor. So if you use this device, make sure that the sensor is facing forward with the lens facing out. Make sure that this front center part is not blocked. And another thing to note, this is called a proximity sensor, not a distance sensor. So it senses when things are close, but it doesn't tell precise measurement. For precise measurement, you'd want to look for a distance sensor, not a proximity sensor. There are lots of distance sensors that you can choose from. If you want to simplify wiring, you want to make sure you choose one that's STEM QT. But this sensor might work well for very close proximity, something like detecting a hand is approached for dispensing hand sanitizer. And the sensor starts by identifying something from a few centimeters away, maybe about four inches or so. And at that distance, you'll see an initial value move from zero or one and start to change. But the numbers grow the closer you get to the device. But be aware that the numbers don't go up evenly. So the gap between the numbers is gonna be larger the further you are away from the device. And as you come closer and closer, those numbers are gonna increase quickly. So the last few millimeters will run the numbers up. And here you can see in the output from the serial console, the plotter, and the number of lights that are lighting up, you can see small numbers and just a few lights when I'm further out, and when I get really tight, nearly touching the lens, we see the numbers really spike up. So let me show you how to implement this for simple readings, and then we'll have an LED strip challenge where we light up more LEDs as the proximity reading increases, like I just showed you. So working with this device in CircuitPython is super easy. First, we import our library. I'll use this statement from Adafruit underscore APDS9960 dot APDS9960 import and then in all caps APDS9960 and also make sure that you've got the Adafruit underscore APDS9960 library inside of the LIB or LIB folder on your microcontroller otherwise your code won't work. Then we'll create the I squared C object that we need whenever we work with STEM AQT and then we can use the I squared C object to create the sensor object and we're going to name this object multi underscore sensor we could use any name we want, but I like multi-sensor. I think that's a little easier to understand in your code than the letters and numbers that are the actual name for this device. It's almost like these devices were named by Elon Musk and Grimes. And then we create this object by using the APD9960 class. Passing in the I squared C object we created above. Then we turn on proximity reading by setting the device's enable underscore proximity property to true. And then we get a proximity reading between 0 and 255, with 255 being closer, by reading the dot proximity property from the multi-sensor object. And in this code, I'm putting this reading inside of a tuple, so the reading's surrounded by double parentheses. And I also put a comma at the end before the closing double parens. And in the prior CircuitPython School videos, we mentioned that this was how we could get these results to display in the plotter in Moo. So let's code this up. So let's write code for using the APDS9960 multi-sensor. And I'm going to import board, comma, time, and from Adafruit underscore APDS9960 dot APDS9960, import, and in all caps, APDS9960. Then we'll create that I squared C object with I2C equals board dot, and in all caps, I2C, open and close parens. We'll create the sensor object that I'm going to call multi underscore sensor, setting that equal to the class APDS9960, and we got to pass in between parens I2C, the I squared C object that we created above. Then we need to enable the proximity sensor, so that's multi underscore sensor dot enable underscore proximity, setting that equal to true. Then in our while true loop, make sure you add that colon. 
we'll print the sensor reading in a tuple so that it shows up in the console as well as in the moo plotter. So we say print double open parens multi underscore sensor dot proximity comma close paren close paren and then we'll say time dot sleep and in parens we'll pause for one tenth of a second 0 0.1. Then we'll save our work as code.py to our CircuitPy volume. Then let's open our serial monitor and our plotter and let's see how we're sensing. So as I bring my finger close, we can see the numbers spike up. We see the plotter spiking up, bring it away. The numbers get smaller and the spike goes down. So you can move your finger closer, look right on top of it. That's where we get 255 away on top of it, away, you can move it back and forth and get a wavy sine wave kind of pattern. And now that you have this skill down, spectacular circuit Python programmer, we're ready for a challenge. Now in this challenge, we'll code the light strip behavior that we demonstrated at the start of this video. We'll light up more LEDs as the proximity reading goes up with all LEDs lit when the proximity reading hits its max value of 255. So we'll add a NeoPixel strip and so that we can compare answers, let's call this strip the signal pin will be connected via a variable named strip underscore pin. I'm going to use pin D7 on my board, but feel free to use a different pin, especially if your board doesn't have a D7. And I'll refer to the number of LEDs on the strip with the variable LEDs on strip. Now feel free to use any color. I'm going to use red. And if things are working properly, you should see results similar to the video at the right. So give this a try, Code Monster. I know you can do it. I have faith in you. Why don't you pause? Give it a shot. And when you're done, resume, and we'll compare answers. Now I'm going to show you a solution, and then I'm going to show you one that involves even less code in a new concept for us, slicing. So these next two slides show you the first solution, and this uses techniques that you should know by now. And I figure it might be easiest if I show you code first and talk through what it does, and then we'll type it into Moo. So first, here's the first part of our code, and it should be clear to everybody who's gone through the earlier videos in CircuitPython school what's going on here. The things that we added to the prior example are in green, so what we need to do here is import the NeoPixel library. Since we're working with NeoPixel strips, and we need to configure that strip. That's what we do with these three lines here. Now here's where the real work gets done. I create a new value called reading, and this holds the reading from the proximity sensor. That's the value from 0 to 255. And I do this so that I can print out the same reading value and then reuse it to calculate how many LEDs I need to light up. Now this calculation here will take the reading and convert this into a value from 0 to 30, depending on what we get from the reading. And that's what we want. We want to light up either zero lights, so no lights at all if we get a zero reading, or up to 30 lights if we get a reading around 255. And if you do the math, you'll see that a value of zero gives us a zero, and 255 gives us 30. And while most values between zero and 255 give us a value that has decimals in it, that's a floating point value, I'm going to round that because I want to get rid of the decimal places so that we can use these values when calculating the whole numbers that we need to use to figure out which individual lights to light up. And here's a pro tip. So in an earlier video, I used int, int, to convert values that have decimals in them to values that don't have them. But I've since learned that CircuitPython and some other versions of Python too can do really weird things when converting floats into integers using int. And if you try this in the code that we've written here and use int instead of round, you'll actually get a number that's one less than the number expected. Now this doesn't happen if we use round and we still get an integer value that we can use when calculating the index. So the pro tip is use round instead of int. Now, since the value of zero means don't light up any lights, what we do here is we check to see if we have a zero, and if we have a zero, then we turn off all the lights by filling them in with zero, zero, and zero. But if we have a value above zero, then we go through all the indexes in the light strip. So that's what this for loop does, zero through LEDs on strip. But remember, we never reach LEDs on strip. So in my strip that has 30 for LEDs on strip, we stop at 29. And that's great because the 30th light is at index 29, and the zeroth light is actually the first light in the strip. Then if the index that we're looking at is less than or equal to LEDs to light minus one, again, we're subtracting one because we're zero indexed, then we light up that index in red otherwise we shouldn't light up that light so we assign that to color 000 which is an absence of light that turns the light off so this should work let's code it up and give it a try so I'm gonna modify the comment to add with light and make sure that I also import NeoPixels because I'm working with a NeoPixel strip and I am going to specify a variable called strip underscore pin, set that equal to board dot D7. If you're using a different pin for the signal wire in your NeoPixel strip make sure that you set that properly here then I'll create a value LEDs on strip, and I'll set that equal to 30 because I have 30 lights on my strip. 
and I'm going to set the strip value equal to NeoPixel dot capital N Neo capital P pixel. And in between parentheses, I'll say strip underscore pin comma LEDs on strip comma brightness equals 0 0.255 comma and auto underscore right equals true. And if any of that was new to you, feel free to go back and look at one of our earlier CircuitPython school videos when we talk about how to work with NeoPixel strips. Then down in while true, I'm going to create a new value called reading, and I'm going to set that equal to multi underscore sensor dot proximity. And then I'm going to just put the reading value into the print statement here. This is just so that I can use the same single reading value, both to print as well as to light up our LEDs. Now below this, I'm going to create a value called LEDs to light. That's how many LEDs in my light strip I should light up. Then we'll take our reading, which is a number from 0 to 255, and multiply it by the scaled percentage of LEDs on strip divided by 255. But remember, we've got to round this, so I'll put round in front and then wrap this whole value in parentheses that'll turn this into an integer with no decimal places and it should create that integer more accurately than if we were to use int which sometimes causes problems then if leds to light equals equals zero colon that means we shouldn't have any lights lit up so we'll say strip dot fill two parentheses zero comma zero comma zero close two parens else colon then we'll loop through all of the lights on the strip for i in range zero comma leds on strip colon and if i is less than or equal to leds to light minus one colon remember we're zero index so we're scaling these values back by one we'll say strip in brackets i equals and in parentheses 255 comma zero comma zero that's red else colon strip in brackets i equals in parentheses zero comma zero comma zero we're going to turn that light off and then we'll outdent even with all of the other statements under while true and we'll say time dot sleep and pass in 0 0.1 one tenth of a second then let's save we'll open our serial monitor we'll open the plotter so we can see that as well and we'll adjust the screens and now watch as I move my fingers closer, we can see the proximity value going up and the lights start to move up. So I can go from zero to one and then I can go all the way to the end and back off, go all the way to the end again. So we can see you're very, very close to the sensor. So this proximity sensor is uh, you know, definitely meant for close ranges, but our LEDs are lighting up perfectly. We're going from being able to shut all the lights off to turning all the lights on. Excellent work. Now I wanna show you that additional technique of using slices that allow us to write Write less code and still get the job done. So instead of looping through all of the lights and one by one either turning them on or turning them off, we can instead turn a whole group of lights on or off. And this concept is referred to as a slice. Now slices work on sequences like lists and tuples. And in this syntax, we use square brackets. And we've got a starting value, a colon, and an ending value to go up to but never to reach. So we stop at one minus the ending value. So when we have in brackets zero colon LEDs to light, let's imagine that LEDs to light is five. Then that would apply the operation to the right of the equal sign to the lights 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We never reach 5. So what does this do on the right-hand side of the equal sign? Well, we're going to take each light and set it to the color in parentheses. Remember, colors are a tuple. 255 comma 0 comma 0 is the tuple for red. And we multiply this by 5. That makes 5 copies of this tuple, one for each of the values 0 through 4. Now the same thing down here, if LEDs to light is 5, then this slice here starts at 5 and it goes up to but never reaches LEDs on strip. Let's imagine that's 30. So it's going to stop at LEDs on strip minus 1, 29, which is great because we wanted to subtract 1 from this anyway because we're 0 indexed and the 30th light is really at index number 29. And then we use the same multiplication technique on the right side of the equal sign to take the tuple that turns off the lights, that's in parentheses 0, 0, 0, multiplying it by this value and applying it to everything on the left side of the equal. That's it. Now you certainly didn't have to know how to use slices to complete this challenge, but slices can be really handy. They can save you a few lines of code and they're a pretty standard Python technique. So it's good to know about them. Now there's a lot more to slices than we've covered here, but now you can recognize them, you can use them and you can learn more on your own if you'd like. So let's code this up and make sure everything works. So by using slices, we're gonna be able to get rid of the for loop and the if else statement that's inside of it. So I'm gonna delete all of that. Then I'm gonna say strip and in brackets zero colon LEDs to light close bracket. So that's my slice equals and then the tuple in parentheses 255 comma zero comma zero that's red. And I'm gonna multiply that by LEDs to light. So that first slice is gonna turn all of the lights that I need to turn red to red. And then below this, I'm gonna say strip and in brackets LEDs to light colon LEDs on strip close the square brackets. I'm going to set that equal to the tuple 0 comma 0 comma 0. That's going to turn off the lights and I'm going to multiply that by LEDs on strip minus LEDs to light. 
I'll shrink down the font a little bit so you can see everything on one line, and that's it. I replace the for loop and the if else statement with just these two lines using two different slices, one to light up a portion of the lights in red, and another to turn off the rest of those lights. So let's make sure this works. We'll save this, open up the plotter, adjust the screen, then let me turn on the camera so we can take a look at what the sensor is going to do. And as I move my finger forward and then pull it away, we can see the lights are changing. This works perfectly. You've learned how to use slices. Nice work. Now the code we've written should work with most boards that run CircuitPython, but one really nice little board is the Adafruit CutiePie RP2040, and this board has a few quirks, so I thought it might be useful to demonstrate how to get things working on this board as well, just in case any of you are using this board now or in the future. So on this board, we can't set up an I2C object that works with the StemAQT port on the board like we do with all the other boards. So this line doesn't work with StemAQT on the CutiePie RP2040. Instead, you've got to import busio, and then you've got to use this line, busio.i2c, and then passing in board.scl1 and board.sda1. Now, once you do that, everything else should work fine. Now, there's one other thing that I'm going to change in this demo. Since the Cutie Pie doesn't have a D7 pin, I've wired up our NeoPixel strip like this diagram over here with the signal wire going into A1, so I just need to make sure that I set up my strip pin to point to board.a1. Notice that the power is also into 3.3 volt. That doesn't affect our code at all, though. Now, We'll also get an error pointing out that we need to add one more library to the lib file on this board. That's going to be Adafruit underscore register. And I'll show you that error just to make sure you know how to handle an error like this if you ever encounter it. Now remember with this board we need to import bus IO and I'm going to comment out our traditional setup for an I squared C object and here we're going to say I2C equals but now we'll use the bus IO library that we just imported dot capital I to capital C and in between parentheses we're going to pass in two different pins one for SCL and one for SDA and to get the pins that are associated with the STEMI QT port on this particular board that's the Adafruit Cutie Pie RP2040 we say board dot SCL1 comma board dot SDA1. Now since my strip isn't connected to pin D7, I'm going to comment out this line, but I'm going to copy it down below and I'm going to change D7 to A1. Then I'm going to save and open the serial monitor, and I'd mentioned we're going to get an error in here. Notice that it says import error no module named Adafruit underscore register. Now we got this error even though we weren't trying to import Adafruit underscore register in our code, and we don't need to import that library, but sometimes a board might need a library nonetheless. So if you ever get an error like this, just copy over that library into your LIB folder on your board. And so here's how we can do that. I'm going to head over to the Mac Finder. I'm going to go to my CircuitPy volume. This is my Cutie Pie RP2040 board. And if I open the LIB folder, I don't see any Adafruit underscore register folder in here. So over in this window, I've got all of the original libraries that were in the LIB folder that I downloaded from circuitpython.org. If you need those, you can just go ahead and download those again. And I can find Adafruit underscore register in here. It's a folder, not an individual file. And I'll just copy that over to the LIB folder on my board. And look at that, when it's done, the code restarts and I can see that it's working. So I'll just open my plotter window and adjust my windows here. And let's look at what happens if I move my finger closer to the sensor. And how about that? The sensor is working with the NeoPixel strip exactly as it was on our other board. Now you know how to use the Cutie Pie RP2040 and you've seen a library error and know how to fix it if you ever encounter something similar. So once again, we had a video with big learning. We worked with the Adafruit APDS9960 sensor. We used an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, but most of what we did works with other CircuitPython boards as well, as long as you've got a STEMI QT connector built in or wired up to that board. We printed and plotted the proximity reading, so we just worked with the proximity readings on this board in this video, but there are other things we can do with this, and we will do those in other videos. We scaled the proximity readings we got to light up the LEDs on a NeoPixel strip based on proximity. We learned about the gotcha that sometimes happens when you convert floats using int and we learned the workaround using round that gives us better results. We learned how to use Python slices to write less code and we learned how to get the same code working on a Cutie Pie RP2040 pointing out a library error and how to fix it. I hope you're feeling skilled. Remember, even if you're not in my class, if you take a photo or video of your build and tweet it with a hashtag built with Prof G, you might be selected for the weekly drawing of the Happy Gear Make Something Awesome sticker. Be sure to let me know if you like these videos and keep on coding.